Hello guys, um, this is going to be a video on just the binding process, binding a TD series receiver to the uh, X20S, which should be the same as the X18 and the XE. Okay, so obviously the first step that you need to do is you need to go into model and create a model. So let's go ahead and go to model select, okay, and over here I'm going to be creating, um, let's just say my 70 millimeter um, F16 from Frewing, so that's the next one that I, I got to create. So let's go ahead and create that, okay? So I happen to already be in the EDF category, but if not, I can page over or use, or just come over here and tap, but I can page over to EDF, the category that I created, come over here and add a model with the plus symbol, okay? So now, um, same thing, I'm using the page button instead of that, just to, just for clarity, okay? So it is an airplane, next. And it's one channel, next, and over here, ailerons, okay? So I am going to use two ailerons and no flaps for this particular model. And it's going to be a traditional tail, not a V-tail. And um, elevator, we're going to change that to be two channels. And rudder is one channel is correct. And the next thing we got to do is name it. So over here, we're going to go ahead and name it um, F16. maybe 70 millimeters, okay? So once that is named, and if I wanted to, I can add a picture, I generally don't, okay? Now the model is created. So the next thing that we need to do now is go into model, and now we're gonna do the bind process. So I come over here to RF system, and I hit enter, okay? Now, notice there's nothing on because it wants to know whether or not you can use the internal module or the external module. And since this is a tandem radio and a tandem receiver, we're going to use the internal module. And we come over here and we activate it. Okay, so state is now on. So now the internal module is on. Okay, next type. Um, this is a tandem receiver, which is TD mode. Okay. And when you did that, you noticed that 2.4 and 900 popped up over there. So now it knows that you are using a tandem receiver. It's going to go to those protocols. Okay, so now under 2.4, it says antenna, internal, or external. Um, you can add external antennas to this. I haven't found a need, so I'm just using the internal antenna for the um, 2.4 and a 915. Under 915, there's another option, which is power. Okay, so... 900 or 915, um, the good thing about it and the whole point of it is to run long range. Um, I'm not running long range, I'm running line of sight. Um, so I'm not doing FPV, I'm just doing um, uh, line of sight. And because of that, um, according to the Free Sky folks, um, they said that 100 milliwatts is more than enough for that. So I'm going to switch it to 900, I'm sorry, to 100 milliwatts, and it says the power has been changed, please rebind. We haven't bound yet, so we're okay. Okay, so then we come over here, and now the next step we have to do is the actual binding process, okay? And so taking a look at these menu items here, okay, you've got up top, you've got register, and then you've got bind. Uh, with the tandem series, um, and I believe the access series, this is what you need to do on this. And what it is, is when you register it, you assign the unique ID, which is up here, um, that it sort of like gives to your radio. And that unique ID um, gets assigned to that receiver. So the receiver knows when you register it that it is for this transmitter, okay? That's the first process. The next process is bind, okay? So let's do the first process first. Okay, we're gonna hit register. Register. We'll do this first, okay? Now, the next thing you do is apply power to your um, tr um, receiver. And as you do that, you hold down Register. this button over here. So I'm gonna hold down that button, power it up, okay? And when you did that, you'll notice that it popped up Register. with TD10R, okay? So then you know that is the correct one and you register it. Registration okay. Okay, so now that receiver has been registered, um, and the unique ID of the transmitter is now into that. Okay, the next step that you have to do is the actual bind process, okay? So you come over here and you hit bind, bind. okay? Now it's saying waiting for Telemetry receiver, lost. okay? You come over here and you do the same thing, you unplug it, this time, once you've done your register, you no longer have to hit that button. Bind. 
Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and plug it back in to power it up. And then boom, the TD10R is the device that we want. Hit Bind. enter. Vine is okay. Now that receiver is now bound to this model and it's also registered to this transmitter. Okay, with access and also tandem, they have um, really cool over here, which is set. You've got some options. I'm going to go to options. Okay, <clears throat> this is really cool. So you notice over here, it says pin one, channel one, pin two, channel two, three, and so on and so on. So this has 10 PWM outputs, or your 10 outputs, I should just say, not just PWM. <clears throat> and the one through eight are here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you have nine and 10 down here at the bottom. Okay, so nine and 10 are sideways in the bottom. These are vertical. Okay, what's nice is you can assign those pins. Notice they call them pins, not channels. The reason why is because, say, pin one, I can make it channel 11, channel 17, whatever I want. So you can say that pin one is no longer channel one, it is now channel 17. Okay, um, but let's go back and let's go ahead and put that um, back to channel one. Uh, actually, before we do, um, there's some, some more options here. You've got S bus in, F bus, S bus out, and smart port. So if I had a free channel that I'm not using, I'm not using all 10 of those, I can make one of them smart port. What smart port is, um, it's used for free sky telemetry system. So if I happen to have a, a voltage um, uh, telemetry, or if I had a current sensor, or if I had a GPS sensor or an airspeed sensor, I can plug it into a smart port. So this radio doesn't have a, a dedicated smart port, but I can make any of these channels smart port. Okay. So for example, boom there on channel one, I can make that into a smart port. So now channel one is no longer an output over here, but now it's, it's a smart port and I can da daisy chain any of my telemetry sensors into that. Okay. And over here, so if I want to, I can make this another smart port, but you only need one because you daisy chain them together. Okay. The other option is S bus. Okay. So you can do S bus out. Okay. And S bus out means out of here, it'll go to say a flight controller, one cable, and it has all your channels. That's what S bus is. Okay. The only one that has restriction is S bus in. S bus in can only be channel one. And what S bus in is I can hook up another receiver. So a lot of times what I do on my bigger planes is I have a TDR10 and I have um, uh, a TDMX, which is a, a small, um, like looks like one chip receiver that doesn't have that many um, PWM ports. Um, and what I use that for is a backup. So I have this as your main receiver and then I have another receiver with the same amount of antennas on it. And I hook them up together with S bus in. And what that does, so on this receiver, I go S bus in, S bus out of the X, the XM. And what that does, it gives me redundancy. Okay. So the only thing that you can, um, that you cannot assign is S bus in. That has to be channel one. But besides that, um, everything can be anything else. All right. So let me get out of this again. And let's go ahead and make this back to channel one. Okay. All right, well, that's pretty much it. You're bound, okay? I'm gonna get out of this really quick. Now, notice here also that you have three different receivers. You can bind three receivers for this one model, okay? And if you wanted to, you can assign, like say a second TDR10 and put that into RX2 and you can make those channels. So this one might be channels one through 10 and the second one might be channels 11 through 20. And what's nice is you can have m much more channels by using multiple receivers, or you can do what I was talking about earlier, was using S bus. You can have another receiver in here and you can have them both have the same channels and you have redundancy. 
So that's the reason why there's multiple channels or multiple receivers over here. All right. And that's pretty much it. Uh, we can get into some of those other things that we talked about in more detail in other videos, but this was just a basic one on binding. Okay, this receiver is now bound. It is registered to the transmitter and bound to this model. All right, thank you very much. Have a good day.